Hi there, Sandra here from Create in Spain. Today I'm using Xtool Creative Space, the software that Xtool has for controlling its various laser cutters. So in this particular section, what I want to do is to cover the material test grids that you can do automatically in Xtool Creative Space. So the way that this is done in Creative Space is with a particular array. So all I'm going to do at the moment is click on the shape here and pick a shape. I'll go for a heart, why not? And I'm just going to resize that down very slightly. There we go. Oops, I put two in. Never mind, take that one out. Normally, if I was going to be cutting something on here, there are automatic settings that are a guideline for you to use. So if I click on the material, we can see I've got user defined. Flat laser is because it's a flat piece that I'm cutting. It's not doing a rotary item or anything like that. It's just a flat piece. If I click on this arrow here, we get user defined materials and there's a small list of materials there. Once we want user defined at the moment. Now, what I need to do is to work out what speeds and power I need to use to cut a particular material. And a test watch is how we do it. So with this one selected, the next thing we have to do is to decide whether we want to score it, which is basically a thin line. It could be just a drawn line almost, or it could cut through depending on the power and speed. An engrave, which will give it a fill, hence it's turned a solid color, or a cut, which is pretty obvious we want it to cut all the way through. And down here we have manual settings that we can use. Ignore, lower the focus. That's not anything you need to be worried about at this particular point. So we have power, which goes from one all the way up to 100. It's a percentage. And we have speed in millimeters per second, which goes from one all the way up to 300. Now, the proviso on the speed is that if you're doing something very small, it's rather like a car accelerating. It doesn't get a chance to get up to that speed. That's the nearest analogy I can think of for it. You might put your foot on the accelerator, but you don't reach 300 straight away. So if you were stopping in two yards or two meters, whichever you like to use, you would not get up to the full speed of the car, even if you had your foot pressed flat on the floor of the car. And that is the same with a laser cutter. It will, over the entire area of the bed, get up to that speed, but only if you're doing a large project. If you're doing a small project, you're not going to be getting up to that speed at all. You just can't. It has to start off and it has to accelerate to a speed and then decelerate. With our shape here, we need to decide, as I said, what we're going to do with it. So I've chosen to set this to cut. I'm going to go up to the array and we have three options, a grid, a circular and a material test array. And this is a nice automated process that you can alter to your heart's content. If I'm cutting card or paper, we have power settings here and we have speed settings. So let's go for the power ones first. I am not going to need maximum power to cut through paper. I'm going to drop this right the way down to, so I'll put in 40 there. And my minimum, I will put down to three. So you change these to what you think it's likely your parameters might be. And you've got the number of columns and you have the spacing. I've got spacing of three millimeters. I'm not going to alter that. So the speed, 300. I'm not going to get there because I'm only cutting out tiny little hearts. So I can put the speed down to, oh, I'll put that down to 40. Minimum speed. I'll go for three again. Why not? <laughs> and I've got five by five rows spacing. Yeah, it's going to generate a chart for me to cut out. Ta -da! There we go. But there needs to be a little bit of editing on this. I'm going to ungroup it like that. Now all of it is set to cut at the moment and I don't want this lot cutting out. I mean, that would be silly, wouldn't it? So I'm going to set that to engrave and likewise with these pieces down here and these pieces here, set that to engrave. Now in a paper test that I did, I actually selected those and I clicked ignore because I figured that's going to take time to do. It might burn straight through the paper and I can always just write this in hand writing 
on the side of my piece, so not a problem. Okay. Now, the other thing that I did is I added a square outline and set it to cut. What it's going to do is automatically generate figures in between the two extremes that you said. So I've got three and 40 is the parameters that I put in. And in between that, I've got a speed of 13, 22 and 31. And on the power, I've got 13, 22 and 31 as well, because these numbers were the same, the three and the 40 were the same and it'll come up with numbers in between those. So then what you want to do is to process it. And if you're happy with that, it will cut in those parameters. So if, for example, I choose this heart here, the setting that it's going to do will come up. So it's gonna have a power of 31. Yeah, that's the power that it's listed. And a speed of 13. Yeah, that's exactly how it's going to cut it. So here's one I've done on craft paper and as you can see I went for a speed between 40 and 5 and the power between 2 and 30. And as you can see on a power of 9 and a speed of 5 it cuts out perfectly. I could possibly have even taken the speed down lower. However, when you're dealing with paper the faster you cut it the better as long as it's cutting through. So the fastest speed I've been able to cut this on these lower settings is 14. Now with paper and card, you're in this fine kind of gap because if you put the power up too high, no matter how fast you cut it, you risk burning it and singeing it. You really don't want to do that. So it's actually quite good to put it down to a very low power and a relatively low speed. It still cuts it pretty fast, believe me. Don't think you're going to notice too much, but that's a matter of personal preference and it will depend on what type of paper or card you are cutting. I've done them on craft card, which is pretty heavy at about 270 GSM, again, stuff from Aldi. And I've done it on very thin paper, the paper that you get in a printer. And I've managed to cut all of those very nicely by doing test swatches. And that's the way to go. Very, very simple to do. And it's well worth doing a test swatch. But I've yet to see many people using card or paper on their laser cutters. Most of the videos I've seen have been on wood which is fine. I want to cut wood as well, and I will be cutting wood, and I have cut wood. Um, but I also wanted to be able to do intricate designs for paper crafting without the use of a sticky mat. So I hope you found that interesting and useful, and I will be doing some more tutorials at a later date and sharing projects that I've made both with my laser cutter and with my Caesar Juliet. I'm a lucky girl. I've got a choice of both. Thanks for watching. Take care.